Amen. Uh, this morning, we want to come before God in prayer. Uh, we want to pray this morning for uh, for our surrounding churches. Amen. For Amen. San Bernardino, Rialto, Riverside. Amen. Amen. We want to keep uh, Pastor Sean in prayer. Amen. He is uh, for healing. That God will continue to just bring healing upon his body. Amen. Amen. That God will help this church continue to strengthen it. Amen. I'll tell you what, his, his, his church is doing well. Amen. Uh, <laughs> even with him, him being sick and having to miss and everything else and they've been holding it together so you know you know want to continue praying for that amen. Amen. i want to pray for uh for our leadership amen for pastor lorenzo amen and sister stephanie and pastor tony and sister Anna Carina. um also for pastor jesse pastor uh, alex pastor uh, jose Herrera and mexico amen i want to pray for the south south mexico south uh, america churches amen uh there's some uh, expansion it's the Coming, that may be coming in. I want to pray that God will just be with it. Uh, I want to pray for the church in Italy. Amen. For both churches. Amen. And also for Paris. Amen. Uh, November 10th, they're going to be opening up in Paris and they're going to go look for a place to live and all that. Uh, Pastor Ernesto, he's excited. And his wife, Aviola, they're excited that God's doing something over there. Um, so you know what? Uh, there's already a, a, a a group of like 12 people amen, amen that are that are faithful to a zoom bible study imagine that this church started because in paris because there was a need and what happened was uh there was a couple in paris that that's related to the the pastor his wife in uh, in italy and they wanted the pastor in italy to to marry him so they asked him and he said well you guys aren't saved he goes i'll tell you what i'll marry you but you're gonna have to sit through some classes so he gave them some some uh, premarital classes, salvation classes before uh, they, before he did the service, and he, and he did it for a few months, and, and they got saved. And when they were done, the 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 guy, the husband, he wanted to continue, so they continued doing Bible studies just through Zoom from Italy to to Paris. They were just Zoom meetings, and they were doing Bible studies. And before you know it, they started inviting people to their house to to expand on this Bible study that was done by Zoom. And uh, before you know it, their house is full of people. Amen. And it's it's forced us to put a church in Paris now. Yes, hallelujah. In 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 Peru, we have a church in Lima, Peru, that we've been blessed to be partnered with. He has his church in Lima in the city. About an hour away on the outskirts of Lima, he has another group of, of young young men and women who who are who he is giving Bible studies for. So once or twice a week, he actually he actually has to get on the bus and travel an hour or so to the other side and do a second church, Amen. And we're getting ready to plant another person over there, Amen. And because yeah. because of the, because they they have a heart for God, so God is on, God is on the move, Amen. So we want to pray that God will just move for these churches, yes, amen. amen. And we look around and say, how come you know how come we don't have all these people? Well, you got people in these countries that are going out and, and, and reaching the lost, man. We want to see the church move. We gotta, we gotta go out and reach the lost, Amen. And that's what they're doing. God's just expanding right now. He's expanding. So you know, we want to pray that God will continue to help, Amen. We want to pray for, uh, for Ralph, Amen, uh, brother Ralph, Amen. Uh, I've been talking with him, and and uh, he's looking for a place to stay, Amen. So we want to pray that God will be with him. And God will help him. He's actually yeah. looking for a trailer. Anybody has a trailer, so he can, he has a place he can park it. Um, so you can live in it, and uh, so I just want to pray that God will be with them. God will just help them yes, for uh, Juan and Alvia, Amen. God will be with them for Carlos and 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 Rebecca, Amen, and 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 uh, the Hernandez family, Amen. The Rosas family. I want to pray that God will be with them. That God will just help them, Amen. amen. I want to pray for for Joey, Joey Rosas, Amen. Uh, it's Robert's uh, son. He moved to Vegas, and uh, he's doing good. He's doing really good. So I want to pray that God will just continue to help him and give him strength. Amen. Um, but this morning, amen, I also want to pray for all of our families. Amen. amen. Our um, our individual families. Because you know what? We have uh, we have family that needs to get saved. Amen. So I want to pray that God will be with us. That God will help us be that example that he's called us to be. That God will, God will just be with the families. And that God will bring salvation in our families. Amen. 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 So you know what? This morning, amen, you trust in God. You pray to God. You, you, you allow God, amen. To, to meet the needs, amen. So let's cry out to God, amen. And I want to ask you, man, if uh, Brother Angel, if you can open us up in prayer, man. So let's let's uh, worship God, amen, as he opens up in prayer. Amen. Hallelujah, my Lord. I praise you, God. I worship you, Lord. Glorify you. 
So we got some announcements this morning, and then we got some new announcements, uh, some things have already taken place. Um, you know what, this last uh, Friday, this Friday, hey man, you guys can have a seat. Uh, uh, Friday, we, uh, we went to All Central for the Healing Crusade, and uh, the Hernandez family went with us, and, and Walter's mom. I'll tell you what, people got healed, man. People got touched. Um, Walter's mom wanted to start dancing. Hey Amen. She couldn't believe. She 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 shouted. She was wow. God is powerful. It was it was it was an amazing touch of God. Uh, Pastor Larry Gregory did an amazing job. Hey Amen. He did a he did an amazing job. I really liked the way he 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 he, he did the whole thing. Did it, did the service and El Central, of course, they always host fantastic fantastic events. Um, people got people got saved. There was man, probably about fifty people got saved. It was a, the altar was full. Everybody went to the field. There was a bunch of people at the altar, um, and there was a, a one one that stuck out. Hey, man, there was two. There was there was a lady and a man. There was a lady who was crying, who who was barely moving, and crying, and it brought her up in the front uh, to kind of increase the faith of the people watching. And we prayed for her, and God just touched her. And when she came up. Um, um, she couldn't believe it. She was just without pain completely. She was in pain from an accident from 20 years. And God just touched her. There was another older gentleman, a man, who, who literally walked with a cane like this. He had a hunchback walking slowly like this. And the whole church knew him. He's been in pain for years. He barely walked. God touched him. He literally got his cane and threw it and literally was running across the field, just running. God just touched them miraculously. Amen. So, so you know what? God did some some good things, and, and Pastor Gregory said something that was important. He says, you know what? Uh, um, when God touches you like that, you got to follow through. You got to you got to stay in touch with God, yeah. which isn't to go along with our message, but but you got to follow through. You got to stay in, in tune with God because God's touching you. You know, it's not over. God God's touching you. He showed you He's real, but now He wants you to live for Him. Amen. So that was an amazing time Friday. Uh, I want to remind you of our regular services every Sunday morning at 10, every Wednesday at 7. Amen. We started a, a new series. Amen. We're getting into some basics of, of salvation, going back to who we are, what we do, and why we do it, why we're saved, how where our salvation comes from. <coughs> Amen. Um, don't forget, church, when you guys come to church, if you have a Facebook, go on Facebook and check in. Amen. Just go, like you're going to hit a message of the drop downs will come, hit check in. New Destiny, Drupal Valley. Amen. Um, it, it brings up our page more often, more often, amen. Uh, you can always uh, look at our previous services on YouTube. Uh, Friday night prayers, amen, October 21st, November 11th, and November, November 18th, amen. The 11th and 18th are two Fridays in a row, amen. We're gonna, I wanted to do the 4th and the 18th, uh, two separate Fridays, but um, there's another event going on on the 4th uh, that we need to be a part of. So um, October 21st, amen, Friday night. Be here uh, at seven o'clock. 
Uh, it's going to be important. It's good to come for prayer. Amen. If you want to see God move, we need to come for prayer. Amen. amen. Nothing changes. Amen. We That's need right. to be here for prayer. Amen. So um, if things ain't moving in your life, your finances ain't good, your house isn't good, people are sick, people are getting mad at you, people don't want to talk to you no more, you need to come to church, amen, and pray, amen. amen. That's, where, that's where it starts, amen. Uh, on uh, October 29th, amen, the last Saturday of the month is the Regional Men's uh, Discipleship, amen, in Rialto uh, with Pastor Patrick Gonzalez, amen. He'll be at, uh, at the um, Rialto Church. Um, on uh, on uh, October the 29th, the Saturday, 11 o'clock. Amen. Uh, this is the one where all the churches uh, get invited. Uh, most of the people around the state will come, will be here. Amen. Make yourself available. Amen. Amen. Uh, arrange your schedule. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, you know, I don't tell people to miss work, but what I do say is that I miss work when I do, when there's certain things. So do do what you got to do, but you do your best to be there because you know what. Um, these men's classes they're really going to help us this is who we are this is if, if you wonder who we are as a church this is what we are we're, we're a discipling church amen we disciple one another amen we speak life into one another and it's in these classes where we get to where you get to see other men that are out there that are doing what you're doing amen it's not it's not isolated to just us amen to crazy pastor ben amen this is what we do amen as a fellowship amen we disciple men Amen. We send them to the field. We, 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 we teach them to raise up other men. Amen. So you know what? Uh, uh, we bring life to the scripture. Iron sharpens iron. Amen. So this will be on uh, October, Saturday, October 29th, 11 o'clock. Um, also, there's a two-day revival. Uh, we're opening it up for two days. It's a three-day revival. We're opening it up for two days in Tijuana, in uh, Las Glorias, Tijuana. Uh, Friday and Saturday uh, evening at 7 o'clock. If you want to go, for, if you can go Friday, uh, go there in the afternoon, even if you want to get a room and then come back Saturday morning or, or however you want to do it. Um, Friday and Saturday, uh, uh, November 4th and 5th, it's the first weekend in Las Glorias, Tijuana. Uh, Las Glorias is where Pastor Noe uh, and Sister Jenny's at. They're the ones that received the van that we had. And uh, they're the ones going to Spain. Amen. So you want to know who the pastors are that are going to Spain? It's it's them. Amen. So. I encourage you to go be a part of see what God's doing over there. Amen. As 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 they're preparing, amen. They're preparing to go to Spain and hopefully they can get there next year. It's a lot of uh, documentation to take place, but but they are going to be going over there real soon to scout. So this will be uh, November 4th and 5th, the first Saturday, Friday, Saturday of November. Amen. Also, uh, the the New Hope Conference uh, is going to be in L.A. or Montebello. Uh, that's coming up. November, Tuesday, November 8th through Friday the 11th. Uh, Tuesday is going to be an evening service. Wednesday, it's not open for you. You're going to be here. But Thursday and Friday, it's morning and evening services. Uh, Pastor Andres uh, from Italy, he'll be here. He's coming. Amen. He'll be there for, uh, I believe, on Thursday, uh, Thursday morning or Thursday night and Friday morning, he'll be preaching. Amen. It's going to be good. Pastor Gene, everybody will be there. So it's going to be a good time. So I want to encourage you to be a part of this. Amen. November 8th and 11th. Um, morning and evening services. If you're interested, let me know. We can, I'll get you all the information where it's at. Uh, there's the Women's Women in Motions Conference in El Centro is coming up. Um, and it's on uh, the November the 18th and 19th. It's a Friday and Saturday. Uh, my wife's going. Um, we're going to make hotel reservations tomorrow. If you if you want to go, Amen. Uh, we're making hotel reservations, and uh, but if you're gonna go, go, Amen. Don't say you're gonna go and then not go. We need you to right. go if you're gonna go because we're gonna we're gonna spend money on these hotel reservations to get them reserved, Amen. We'll let you know what they cost, but the um, but it's uh it's a Friday and Saturday. Uh, the women from all over the place are gonna be going. Uh, the North Mexico churches will be coming up. The ones that come across, plus the Arizona and. California churches, it's a big event, so uh, go, they, they, it's it's a great opportunity. We have the men's classes, these are the women's classes, amen. Um, the question has been, can, we, can women be uh, disciples? Yes, they can, and they disciple each other, just like the men do, amen. They get strong, and, you, and it's it's good for you to go because you, you get to see how other women, how strong in God they are, yes. and it brings encouragement, amen. 
So uh, this is our mother church. So let's go and support and let them know how much uh, we appreciate them. Um, so these are all the offer. This is all the announcements. Hey, man, we're gonna put an offer, man. So let's worship God. <laughs> Hallelujah, Amen. So you know what? This uh, this morning, Amen. Bring your tithes, give your offering, support missions, Amen. Uh, we lifted up a pledge, Amen. And some of you already started giving on the pledge, and uh, and uh, and we appreciate that. It really helps. The ministry move forward. Uh, I spoke with our landlord because you know we still haven't paid this month's rent. I spoke with our landlord, and they're you know they're being gracious. They're they're gonna they're working with us, and uh, so thank God for that. So we want to pray for our, our 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 landlord, Amen. That God moves and continues to help and bless them, Amen. Um, but let's 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 move forward. Let's keep going, Amen, and uh, and continue. Moving the works of God forward, amen. So you know what? You can give through Zell. If you're online and you're watching, you can give through Zell at ndgive, uh, ndgive at gmail.com, amen. And it'll go directly into the church account, amen. Allow God to bless you no matter where you're at, amen. So let's bow our hearts as we bless both the gift and the giver. God, my Father, we thank you, God, for this time, this opportunity to give. We pray, God, that you bless both the gift and the giver, God. Multiply it, God. We thank you for the opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. And what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him when they met the door. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. <coughs> so Wednesday I started a, a, a series. And it's going to... And I'm going to do a little, this series a little different than in the past. And what I've done in the past is, like, I'll keep my Wednesday series to Wednesdays on the Bible study. And then our Friday, I mean, our Sundays will be our Sundays for sermons. This time through, we're going to we're gonna do sermons and Bible studies. Amen. And they're going to kind of overlap each other. Amen. So on Wednesday, I entitled the, the, the Bible study, Why? Just the question, Why? And what we talked about is, you know, what, why? Why, is, why are we saved? What's our salvation come from? What, what, what's the purpose? You know, let's get back to basics. So today, the sermon, I entitled this, What Has Changed? What has changed? Because no matter where we think we are in our salvation, it typically isn't where we are in reality. And remember, whenever I speak these things, I speak upon myself. I'm not, I'm not, I was under a ministry, under, under a, a, a pastor before that did everything but say your name from the pulpit. I don't do that. I'm going to talk to you about what I go through. I'm going to, I'm going to put myself in the center of it first. I, 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 I'm going to preach this message because these are things I go through and am, and am going through. Okay. So. When I ask what has changed, a lot of times as a Christian, we don't think nothing's changed. In our, in our heads, we say we're still right. We still say, oh, I got a good and close relationship with Jesus Christ. We tell ourselves that we are faithful. We tell ourselves that we're doing all the things we're supposed to be doing. And, and, and when we're honest, and this is why I always tell everybody, and I tell or the churches I go to when I preach, I tell them, I tell, I tell you guys this. I don't need you to be honest with me. I don't even need you to be honest with God because everybody lies to both the pastor and God. We've all done it. I'm a pastor today, but I wasn't always a pastor. We always lie. We, we lie to God. We lie to, we lie to the pastor. And what I mean, we say, well, not me. I, I don't do that, but we do. God, if you just help me, if you just save me, if you just heal me, if you help them, if you meet this need, I will. But then the follow through doesn't happen. It starts, but we don't complete it. Why? Because sometimes things change. And, and when we're honest about that, and that's why I said, I just need you to be honest with only yourself, not your partner, not your neighbor, just you. And if you can be honest with yourself, we can begin to move in a different direction, in the, in the direction God has called us to. See, I remember the day I got saved. 
I remember there was a day that I really didn't know what happened. It, 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 and, and all I knew is that something was happening to me. I didn't know what happened. I didn't know what was going on. I don't know what was really being said or why. I didn't ever knew this whole Jesus Christ thing. I never knew this Holy Spirit thing. I never knew salvation. All I knew was the day I gave my life to God, something happened. That's all I know. Something changed. Something took place. That's what I knew. The feeling I got, it was real. When you give your life to God, the feeling you got, that was real. Friday night, we're, we're in El Central, and, 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 and Pastor Larry, he, he, he does the altar call. And he says, if you want to accept Jesus Christ, I'd love to pray with you, though I want you to make your way down to the front. And they go down into the baseball field, and, and, and it's crowded because something happened that night. There was a group of people that was there that were watching what was going on, and, and, and they came in hearing the music, thinking of entertainment, but by the time they left, something happened. Something took place in their life. There was a touch of God, and it was real. See, the touch of God, it's real. The calling of God, it was real when I gave my life to God. When I gave my life to God, I knew I was going to be a different person. That was real. The touch that I had that day, it was real. That's why I said, that's why I titled this, What Has Changed? See, as we live for God, many times, many things happen. You know that since you've lived, in your, lived for God, I want you to take time to think about this. Whether you've been saved for, for a, a, just a short time or a long time. When you gave your life to God, what was your life like? What did you need? What did God restore in your life since you gave your life to God? For me, he restored my marriage. He gave us a relationship. And he kept my family together. He delivered me from the streets. There was something that took place. God did something to me. He sanctified me, cleansed me, and he changed my life. So when you gave your life to God, I want you to take time to think about this. What did you need in your life? Why were you calling out to God? What did you need? And was that need met? Did God meet that need? Did something change in your life? Because when I gave my life to God, relationships, they got restored. Sickness got healed. People got delivered. And we see the promises of God come to pass. We see them come to pass. You give your life to God and you see these things happening. God, I need you to touch me. I need you to help me. I need, I need something to take place in my life because where I'm going, it's not working. And we weren't all bad people. Not everybody's a drug addict. Not everybody's an alcoholic. Not everybody's a gang member. But we're all headed in the wrong place. We were all going to go to the same hell. God still needed to touch each and every one of our lives. And since we've given our life to God, we have seen the promises of God come to pass. You give your life to God, God promises you, I'm going to restore your relationship. And he does. You give your life to God, God promises, I'm going to touch your body, I'm going to heal you. And he does. We've seen things happen right in front of our eyes. Things we know we couldn't do because we tried doesn't matter where you're at in life. You could have been a jacked up, addicted drug addict living under a bridge. But your intent isn't what people see. Your heart wants right. But you just couldn't do it. The addiction was too strong. You needed the chain breaker to come in and break it for you. And we see these things happen. What we need today is to remember that nothing has changed. 
Nothing has changed when it comes to God. When it comes to God, you know that nothing's changed, that, that souls are still being saved. Did you know that God is still healing the sick? Did you know that, that, that people are still being delivered? You know, God hasn't changed. Everything about who God is and his abilities and his strength and his power and his promises, it still hasn't changed. You know that God hasn't taken away the promises that he gave you when you gave your life to God? They haven't been removed. He's still giving you, the, he's still giving you his promises. He promised, amen, that he's going to restore your family, and he's still restoring it. You know that, 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 that like, uh, today, when I gave my life to God, God restored my marriage. You know that I wouldn't be married today if God still wasn't restoring my marriage? If God still wasn't in the center of my marriage? If I, I, the moment I, I, I take God out of my marriage is the moment I'm going to revert back to what it was. Is the moment I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to begin to put my marriage back, back, uh, back on the line where, where I may not be married anymore. You see, nothing has changed when it comes to God. He's still doing the things he has said he would do. He doesn't take them back. He doesn't take them away. He still does what he says he's going to do. In Hebrews 13.8, Hebrews 13.8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Think about this for a moment. What has changed in our lives? Because the Bible says that Jesus Christ has not changed. He is the same. When? Yesterday he's the same. But what about today? It says he's the same today. Yeah, but tomorrow's a different day. The Bible says he's the same tomorrow too. God does not change. He is the same. His plan is still alive. The plan that God he had for you, the plan God has for your life, it's still there. It still exists. His calling, you know that it's still real? That he hasn't removed it? He hasn't changed it? He is still saving souls. We, 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 we as a fellowship are, are, are being forced by the hand of God to open up two brand new churches. Because God says, you know what? Um, uh, either you get somebody over there or I'm going to force you to get somebody over there. I'm going to start saving souls in this area, so we need you to put somebody there. And he's, and he's doing it. In, in, one, in, one, in one country, he's doing it to another part of a city. But in another part of the world, he's doing it to a whole new country. God says, I haven't changed. My desire is still to save souls. And if you ain't going to go do it, I'm going to figure it out for you because it has to get done. If you don't do it, I'm going to do it. Get in, get out, or get ran over, but it's going to happen. God hasn't changed. Did you know God is still healing the sick? He's still healing the sick. We saw some tremendous miracles on Friday, Friday evening. God is still healing the sick. Amen. What has changed? Why are we not laying hands on the sick and, and time to stand up and walk? I'm going to pray for you. Okay, I'm done praying for you. Here, here's your cane. Okay, get back up. Come on, let's go. Let me help you. No, I prayed for you. Throw that thing away. Let's go. Come on. God hasn't changed. He hasn't changed. Pick up your bed and walk. Take a step of faith. God hasn't changed. Well, that's kind of harsh, Pastor. You want these guys and they're hurt. And they're... God's healing. What has changed? God has not changed. People are still getting delivered. People bound by drugs. We just buried my biological father last week. Well, I mean, we didn't bury him. We got cremated, but. Heroin addict, career heroin addict. Entire life. Institutionalized, always in prison. Always, 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 always. He'd violate just to go back because he was most comfortable there. 15 years ago, he gave his life to God. Got deliverance set free from the lifelong addiction. Amen. God doesn't change. He does not change. He's still the same. 
What I have found to be true over the years is God does not change, but it is us who change. Right. We change. But you know what's the worst part about us changing? <clears throat> the change isn't the hard part. Because God can always bring us back. The hard part about that it's us that changes, we fail to recognize that we change. And we fail to want to admit that we, we still need a touch of God. Or we say it. But we don't ever want to look weak. I've been going to church now for this many years or for this long, this amount of time. I have a relationship with the pastor. I have a relationship with other pastors. And, and, and we, don't want to, we don't want to appear to be weak. We don't want to appear that, that, that if I tell them that, 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 that I'm struggling in this area, then all they're going to do is tell me, well, it's because you're not praying over here. Then I'm going to feel dumb. I don't want to do that. See, it's not God that's changed. We change. And, and, and when everybody is honest with each other, and more importantly, honest with ourselves, we can begin to grow again in God. Monday night was the, the local men's discipleship. And at the end of the service, they did the, the um, they did Q&A, questions and answers. And it kind of went this way and that way and everything. I was like, okay, whatever. I wasn't doing the answering or anything. I was just sitting in the back. But after, I had a couple of disciples from a couple of the other churches come and talk to me. And the Q&A actually helped them. And they began to open up and tell me things. And these are, these are men of God who I see, and I'm like, man, they're prayer warriors. I know they're prayer warriors. And they begin to tell me about their weaknesses and things that they're, that they're struggling with. Some of them, I was like, whoa, can't believe you just told me that. But they're being honest with themselves. I'm struggling in this right here. And you know why they're honest and they, and they begin to tell me? Because they needed prayer. They want me to pray for them then, and they want me to take their prayer need home. Because they know that their strength still comes from God. They know that God hasn't changed. That's why I said these discipleships, these women's classes are important. Because you can't say that iron sharpens iron and say that you're living the scripture if you're not in it. If you're not a part of it. If you're not in the will of God. How can we say iron sharpens iron? When all you bring is a two by four, it doesn't work that way. But we never want to admit it because we, we, when we do, we, 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 have to, we have to admit our own failures. And especially here in the States, we don't like to admit failures. You see, when a person gets sick, listen to this. When a person gets sick, where do they go? Doctor. It's reality. People go to the doctor. Christians go to the doctor. I go to the doctor. <clears throat> you know, and why we go to the doctor? Because the, the doctors help make us feel better. You make appointments. You show up to the appointments, right? We show up to the appointments. You know why? Because if we don't, they charge us. So we show up, right? We show up. And you know that if you don't show up to your appointment, you know what they do at the doctor's office? They're going to call you. And tell you, hey, you didn't make it to your doctor's appointment. Would you like to reschedule? I have another opening. You know that before your doctor's appointment, the day before, you know what they do? They call you up and tell you, hey, I just want to remind you, you have a doctor's appointment tomorrow. You want to come in and see the doctor. Remember, you're feeling sick. And when we're and when and when there's a serious sickness present. You begin to build a relationship with the doctor. Yeah? When, there's, when you're sick, you build a relationship with the doctor. You have heart problems, if you're uh, diabetic or, or, or if you have uh, uh, any other can, can cancer, you build a relationship with your doctor, right? It's what we do. The doctor will begin to know all the things that make you feel good, they begin to know all the things that make you feel bad, the things that make you feel sick. 
You will know what, what makes you hurt. This is what this is what the doctors do. Why? Because we make these appointments. We build a relationship with the doctor. <clears throat> but if you are sick, you can end up going to the doctor for years, right? When you have a serious health problem. We can end up going to the doctor for years. Dealing with the same thing. You have the appointment every every week, every Tuesday, 11 in the morning, every Tuesday. The appointment doesn't change for the last five years. You're going to do it for the next three years. And you do it. And every, every Monday, the receptionist calls you. Every Tuesday, you're there. It's what we do. But you know what happens when you're no longer sick? You stop going to the doctor. You no longer have a need for the doctor. Well, why should you keep going, right? If you're no longer sick, you're no longer sick. Why should you keep going to the doctor? Well, sir, would you like to make another appointment for what? I feel better now. The cancer is gone. The sickness is gone. My pain is gone. I no longer need to go. See, all the time that you have spent with the doctor, the relationship you built, you know that the, once you're healed, that relationship no longer exists. You know that the doctor isn't your friend. You know the doctor doesn't invite you to their house, nor do you invite the doctor to your house. Once you feel better, the relationship with the doctor begins to fade away. Because your relationship was built and based strictly on your problem, on your sickness, and on your pain. Unfortunately, more often than not, this is how we serve God. Our life was a mess. We were going, we were going to hell with the sin that we were in. It ruined our life. It messed up relationships. Our families were broken. Jesus became our doctor. And we became faithful to the appointments, to the services. We give the doctor, we give, we give Jesus, or even Dr. Pastor, all the information about our pain, our sicknesses, and our hurts. This is what we do. But when restoration is complete, we are finished with Dr. Jesus or Dr. Pastor. We're finished with them. We no longer have a need to make any more appointments. You know that once you're healed and the receptionist from your doctor's office calls you and says, hey, um, want to make an appointment for you tomorrow? They do it enough, you get mad at them. I ain't making an appointment. Yeah, but sir, we want to have you. But I'm not sick anymore. Stop calling me. Why do I want to go for it? Leave me alone. And when, when things get restored, we take the same approach to God. Well, brother, you weren't in church the other day. Where were you at? Stop calling me. What are you bugging me for? I'm saved. Were you, are you questioning my salvation now? No, but God still loves you. Right. Yeah, but I've been healed already. I've been my, I, 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 ain't, I ain't who I used to be. Leave me alone. What do I need to go to church for? My relationship's restored. My addiction's been broken. My life has changed. I'm no longer in prison. What do I need to go to church for anymore? Stop trying to call me and make appointments for me. Don't you know I've been set free and delivered? And this is the approach we have as Christians when it comes to who we are in God. That's why I tell this, what has changed? When we gave our life to God, we told those around us about Jesus. But now that we serve God, amen, and, 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 and we're part uh, of doing something else, I ain't got time to go visit them and invite them to church anymore. Well, I ain't got time to, to do that. I ain't got time to do that. You know that the, that the church 
The church will never grow. You know the church will never grow? Until the Christian grows. Understand this. The church is not going to grow until us as individual servants of God begin to grow. We're opening up churches because God's just saving souls. Okay? He's just saving souls. Because they're ready. That time is ready. It's right. He knows there's people ready to go. That's why he's doing it. Mm -hmm. But God bring people to our church. When God looks down and he's saying they're ready, that church is ready. That church is ready to receive souls. The church can't grow if the people of God don't grow. When we remain who we are, we remain where we are, and we do the same thing we did yesterday, and we never change tomorrow, amen, God can't move in our lives anymore because we stop answering the call. We stop making the appointments. We stop seeing the doctor. So what has changed? Is God done with you? Did we become healthier or stronger than God? See, this isn't new. This isn't new. And this is not isolated to just one person. This is an ongoing thing in Christianity. We need to remember where our salvation comes from. We need to remember what the cost was for your restoration. Do you remember what the cost was for your restoration? What did Jesus Christ do for me? Well, when we say it like that, we don't remember. When was the last time you thought about Jesus on the cross and it made you cry? Because you know that the pain and the hurt that he went through was for you. When was the last time? When was the last time you took that pain, that hurt, and that sorrow that you know Jesus Christ went through for your pain and suffering and shared that with a stranger? A stranger. When was the last time? Are we now stronger than God? Do we no longer need God? King David, he wrote in Psalms 51, 10 to 13. And those of you who've been around a while, you remember this old song. Psalms 51, 10 to 13 says, Creating me a clean heart, right. O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. He says your salvation because you know what? It doesn't belong to us. That's right. It was a free gift that he gave to us. Yeah. And he says, and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your way. He says, then I will teach transgressors your way. What does that mean? He says, I will go and let sinners know about you. I will teach transgressors your ways. <laughs> And sinners shall be converted to you. So when we get to what feels like a standstill, I'll tell you, I've, I, I, I've, I've served God some, for some time, and I felt sometimes like I'm going nowhere in God. I feel like my salvation is at a standstill. You feel like you're at a standstill? You know, when, when there's water, freestanding water that has no flow, doesn't move, you know, it begins to stink. Mm -hmm. You know, it begins to have mildew. You know, when people have pools, you know why they have a pool guy? Because the pool walls have to continuously be brushed to get rid of all the residue and all the, all the, all the buildup. You know, that, that, that chemical has to be put in it to keep the water clean. A pump has to be put in to get the water flowing and moving. Because when it stands still, the water turns green. And begin and things begin to grow inside of it. Mm -hmm. Mosquitoes begin to begin to come, mm -hmm. and the water becomes dead. You ever felt like you're that, that that's that's where you're at in your salvation? I'm gonna stand still. We're no longer going forward. We do not think 
we are going backwards. That's the, that's, the, that's the hardest thing about Christians. We never think we're going backwards. And we don't think about going forward. We just get happy where we're at. Right. But if you're not moving forward, understand this, church. If you are not moving forward in the things of God, think about this. I'm not talking about in your own personal life. I'm talking about in the things of God, why God saved you. God didn't save you just to restore a relationship. No, God saved you for much more than that. We want it to be for that, but the only way that that will become true is that that relationship now is dedicated unto God. See, God restored me and my wife's relationship. And I know that he restored our relationship for a purpose because now our relationship has been dedicated unto God. That's why we pastor. That's why we do the things we do. That's why we've been traveling. That's why we minister. That's why we, 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 we spend all of our time away from birthday parties and with new converts. That's why I spend all my time talking to backsliders. I spend time talking to strangers because I have dedicated our relationship that God restored right. to him. See, I didn't restore it. David said, he goes, restore unto me the joys of your salvation. See, I didn't have the power to restore it. God restored it. So if we're not moving forward in what God has called us for, we can only be going backwards. So what has changed? Have we received all that we needed from God? Have we? Think about this. Have you received everything you need from God? You see, we, we put a pause in our Sunday evening services. And then I say, okay, we've got Sunday evening service. We're not going to have Sunday service, but we're, I want to start outreach on Sunday evenings. We did it once. Right. Come on. And after we did it once, nobody's asking. Nope. Hey, Pastor, we're going to go do it Sunday? We're going to do it tonight? Mm -hmm. It hasn't happened. Nope. We're not moving forward, church. Nope. We've got to be moving backwards. You know that the, the outreaches are, are designed for the church growth? Not the church growth as in people, but the church growth within you. That's what they're designed for. You know that when, whenever you're going through something, <coughs> when you're feeling down, you're feeling messed up, you know, you know how to get rid of that feeling? Yeah, sometimes you just can't shake the feeling. You know how to get rid of it? Go tell a stranger about Jesus. I kid you not. It will change. It will change your outlook. Tell a stranger about Jesus. It makes you grow. It does. It makes you grow. Remember, the church can't grow unless the people of God grow. And the reason why we as a church have outreach is because I need the church to grow. Yeah. Not as in people and seats. I mean within within our spirit, within yeah, our hearts. That's right. I don't need it for myself. You know why? Because I do it all the time. I'm always outreaching. I'm always talking to strangers about God. I don't just talk to to, to people in my home or, 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 or back. I talk to strangers constantly about Jesus Christ. Bringing that restoration. Bringing that growth. So we're not moving forward, church. We gotta be moving backwards. Mm -hmm. Because if we ain't moving at all, all we are is stale water that begins to turn green and stinks. So what has changed? In Proverbs eleven thirty, it says, "He who he who wins souls is wise. He who wins souls is wise." Winning souls is wise. What does that mean? Bringing the gospel to someone else. Do you believe that the restoration in your life came from heaven? If so, why are we not sharing it? If the restoration in our life came from heaven, shouldn't we want to share it? I hear about fantastic restaurants all the time. I hear about the stores with the best sales all the time. I do. I know which car washes people use because they're the best car washes. I do. I know where the best coffees are at because people tell me these things all the time. In the church and out of the church, people tell me these things. Do 
But yet, we don't tell them where the best church is at. Where the best God is at. Yeah. The best place to find restoration. You know, we even stop inviting people that live with us to church. I'm going to leave you with this. Remember, nothing's changed. The Bible says God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, we stop inviting people in our own house to church. Remember, I started this sermon telling you that this is me. This, is me. this isn't me. I ain't, I ain't telling you. This is me. This is things that I have to go through, things that I have to deal with, things that I have to face. We stop inviting people to church in our own family. Imagine that in our own family, we stop inviting them to church. Yeah, but I believe God's going to, you know, and, and God's going to, I believe, okay, yeah, I get that. But we stop inviting them because we don't want to offend them. Well, if I invite them, they're going to get mad. If I invite them, they're going to be offended. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm offended that I don't invite, that you didn't invite me. Mm -hmm. Think about this. Think about those closest to you. And then tell me what day they're going to die. Think about this. I want you to, uh, this is an honest question. Tell me what day they're going to die. Unless you're going to kill them, you don't know. We stop inviting those closest to us because we don't want to offend them anymore. I don't want to offend them. They get mad. You know what? If I invite them, then I'm going to spend the next two days, being, they're going to be mad at me. They ain't going to talk to me. And they're going to be offended. What, what, what day are they going to die? Tell me, what day are they going to die? This is reality. This, they're, going to, they're going to die. What day are they going to die? Because the day they die... And they find out their name is not written in the, La in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's when they're going to be offended. Yeah. Come on. You knew? You didn't tell me? But you took me to go eat all the time. Hmm. You let me live in your house. Mm -hmm. You said you loved me. Surely you knew I was going to die one day. Well, I didn't invite them because they get offended. They get mad. They get mad. I'm not saying be offensive to them. But show them the love of God. How offended will they, will they be when they find out that you had the keys to heaven but refused to open the door for them? You have the keys to heaven. And instead of unlocking, open the door so they can go through. You leave the door shut, put the keys away. Because we want to save ourselves from an argument. Come on. From being from, from someone else being offended. You know that 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 the Bible and Christianity and teachings have been are being removed from from a lot of places. And 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 we're at, we're in London a couple weeks ago and we had to call roadside service for the rental land. And there was a, a gentleman from Africa who came. He's a Christian and he moved in from Zambia, Africa. And he confirmed what my aunt had told me before, but this is what he said. He said, London needs Jesus. He goes, there's not a lot of Christians anymore. People don't talk about Jesus anymore. He goes, <coughs> the Muslims have taken over. And this is true. They've taken over England. Yeah. The English government is afraid of the Muslims and they don't, they, they don't tell them nothing. He goes, we stand on the corner and we preach. And we pass out flyers. He goes, and every time we go, we get arrested here in London. He goes, and the Muslims are doing the exact same thing and nothing happens. And the purpose is, is that the Muslims speak up and say they get offended for us talking about Jesus. You know what I say to that? Well, I get offended because they won't let me talk about Jesus. 
I get offended because they want to talk about, about their false God. When was the last time we got offended because they won't let us talk about God? You know who you married. You know who your dad is. You know who your mom is. Mm -hmm. You know I'm a man of God. Right. You know I'm a woman of God. Mm -hmm. If that offends you, well, then you got another problem. Your problem goes deeper than me telling you about Jesus. Your problem isn't because I'm a man of God. Your problem is because you're full of sin. And we don't want to tell them that. We don't want to offend them about that. What has changed? What has changed? What has changed in our salvation? What has changed? The Bible says the same yesterday, today, and forever. David says, create in me a clean heart, O Lord. And renew that right spirit within me. And don't cast me away from your presence. And restore unto me the joy of your salvation. When was the last time you said those words? God hasn't changed. What's changed in our lives today? What's happening that we no longer tell people about Jesus. What's happening? What's going on in our lives that we no longer do that? And we admit we, we we don't admit that we don't. We say that we're doing it. But when reality sits in, we know that we've moved our hearts away from God. Mm -hmm. Oh, but yeah, I no, we moved our hearts away from God. No matter where you're at in your salvation, no matter where you're at with your relationship with God, it can always be closer. It can always get better. That's right. You'll never be closest to God until you're dead and in heaven. Yes. Until then, you need to strive to get even closer. That's right. Amen? Amen. I'd like to be about it. We're going to close in respect to Jesus. Amen. Just for a few moments. You know what, this, this morning, I entitled this, What Has Changed? Because so many times things change. The problem is, is that we don't admit to the change. But things have changed. We're no longer letting people know about Jesus like we used to. We're no longer telling people that, you know what, God is still real. Sometimes we have a hard time believing it ourselves because we're just in stagnant water. Mm 